Hello, Zero K fans. It's Shadow Fury 3 back from being sick. I was sick all last week. There was no cast at all for the last two weeks because I was, I think, a flu or something. Anyway, I'm no longer sick or very little sick. Certainly, I can speak. At any rate, so we are going to be having today the December 2v2 tournament. Now, as usual, we'll go over the bracket briefly. So, first off, we're going to have Anakin Yurga versus Ottawar and Parzival, who did actually show up this time. And Anakin Yurga, well, Anarchid, very strong player. The name should be very familiar to anyone who has been watching these at all. Yurga, maybe not so familiar, but Yurga, along with Saab, did actually win, a tr I think, a couple 2v2 tournaments at this point. So, Yurga's a, Yurga's a force to contend with. Ottawar and Parzival, considerably weaker. This is probably going to be kind of one sided. Uh, unfortunately for them, but we'll see if they manage to pull anything out. And then Norm 616 and Rymark, they have, I believe, shown up already, so... Well, Rymark is here, Norm not yet. Kind of waiting on that. And then they're up against Sandro and Shadwo. This should be middling game, but I don't know if we'll be able to cast that. Skazi Orphelius versus Iron Brigade and Andrew Y2K. Similarly to the last one, Andrew Y2K has not shown up yet, neither is Iron Brigade, so that might be a little bit wonky. And lastly, there is Mojin Seno versus Rel Hop and Killer. This... I'm not really sure what to make of this one. I'm not, these players are not the most familiar to me, so unfortunately I really know what to say here. This is actually, overall, the teams are kind of atypical. We didn't, I haven't seen these in a lot of the earlier 2v2 tournaments. I think Skazi or Felix is the only one that's even close to normal. A lot of these are actually fairly new faces, which is kind of nice to see. Not all of them, not not all of them for sure. Actually, a lot of them is more just the combinations are kind of new. Anyway, starting pretty quickly on game one of Anarchid and Yurga versus or let's see, Anarchid and Yurga versus Ottawar and Parzival. And it's gonna be on intersection. That is the first map we're gonna have. Uh, right, hitbox is being a pain in the ass right now. I apologize. Uh, it is just not listening to me. Anyway. So yeah, the players right now are just working out their opening strategies. Gonna be having, let's see, it looks like... Ottawa and Parzival are... They're trying to work out. Okay, Ardo and Parzival don't really have much to go off for strategy. Yurga and Anarchid haven't really, yeah, obtained corners and win. That's this map in a nutshell. Intersection, for those of you not familiar, is a map. Let's turn off the that there. Turn off the map marks. Anyway, it's a map that does not emphasize the center. There's, like, all these have 1.5 metal, but it's set up, like, you have a decent starting position, and the corners are very strong to grab. They're fairly easy to defend. There's this one ramp over here, one ramp over here. The center, however, is almost impossible to defend. These mexes here are okay for defense, as well as these, these ones on the side, sort of, but you really want to get the corners, especially if you can get both corners. That is a big deal. That's six metal extractors right there. That is, I believe, I want to say nine metal. It's a little bit more than nine metal. Like 9.6 metal total. When you capture all the corners. And the center, on the other hand, is only like 4.5. So it's definitely worth taking those corners. And the game is now beginning. Anakin and Yurga starting out in the northwest side of the map. Anakin immediately going to take the southern, or sorry, the lower part of the base, which is actually south. Taking the lower part of the base. Yurga going for Cloaky Bot. Anakin going for light vehicles. Auto War going for light vehicles. And Parzival going for Cloaky Bot. Interestingly, no airplay. This is something that a lot of people have been surprised by for many, many tournaments now. No airplay. Now, Ottawa and Parzival are not the strongest team players, mind you, but just kind of surprising that Jurgen and Anarchid, neither of them go for the air. Neither of them going for quick planes to try to take it out quickly. No. Cloakybot and light vehicles. That's what we see. So right now, both of them are actually not doing too much. And Yurga going forward with a couple glaives to scout out. Fairly basic scouting. Anarchid, on the other hand... Looks to be going for a bit more defensive opening. Opening Slasher into Mason. Oddwork being the more aggressive player on this side with Parswell sending in a few glaze and sending one over to the corner. That is a smart move. Send over to the corner to make sure, actually both corners. Parzival is 
Parzival's on the ball about that one. They really have the right idea. And you're gonna immediately going over the corner as well with a Rector, sorry, a Conjurer. So that is going to be, that should be spotted. And Parzival, however, not able to micromanage quite as well as Yurka can, thus losing their Glaives. And they're also gonna lose both of these Glaives to Yurga's Glaives. So should be able to scout out, at least get a decent idea of what's going on, but not able to kill anything. Feeding a lot of Metal three Glaives so far that have been lost. But at the same time, one of the Conjurer, that Conjurer got killed and Parzival is not retreating. This is where retreat would have been very handy. They did not retreat. The thing is, when you have a situation like that, especially when you've seen your opponent has gone quite a few more units than you, if you can take out a Conjurer, if you take out a free worker like that, great! Run away! Do not advance! In fact, Intersection is a map where advancing is a terrible idea. These ramps here are quite defensible. Trying to attack the main base directly is basically a suicide unless you have an overwhelming advantage already. And at this stage in the game, two minutes in the game, neither side's gonna have an overwhelming advantage. It's just not gonna happen. Even with the units that have been lost so far, it's far from overwhelming. There's a small advantage, but I wouldn't call it overwhelming at all. And Ottawa, interestingly, is throwing up some terraforming around the metal extractor. That's that's actually a pretty good idea. This metal extractor is kind of tricky to defend, and right now Ottawa and Parsifal do not have a whole lot of units being built up. So that that was actually fairly smart. I don't expect Anakin and Yurga to even think that is worth doing, though. They're probably just going to go directly. They're they are building in the southwest corner. I mean, Yurga setting up another Conjurer, which will actually spot out Auto War's Lotus. Auto War building a hood of defenses at first before going for this as a metal extraction point. Not a surprising thing to do, but it does mean it takes a bit longer for Auto War to set up the metal extractors, which means it's just a little bit harder, because at this point, Yurga and Anakin should be aware of what's going on. Yeah, they are aware that there, there is something up here. Not necessarily what it is, but they're aware something exists. At this point, the center of the map does belong to Jurgen and Anarchid. Parzival continuing to throw units away at the center of the map. Switching over to Rocco's, and even that's not helping too much. It's like Rocco Glaive from the looks of it. Yeah, Parzival's going for Rocco Glaive. Ottawa's going for Leveler Ravager, trying to just go for crowd control very directly, as Jurgen pretty much going pure Glaive. And Anarchid going for a bit more of the long-range game, Slasher and Wolverine. This one also getting rid of Parzival's commander. That is a pretty big blow. That was about... Well, between the two of them, that was about a sixth of the economy. That just went out right there. Now, Ottawar is still the stronger player, so it's not as big of a loss, but it's still a pretty big loss. However, Ottawar is doing a decent job securing the northeast side of the map, but the problem is the Slasher is coming in. Slashers can't get rid of the Lotuses, and there's not much that can be done. There is, however, going to be an assault here. These darts, these Scorchers, they're coming out. They're going to get rid of these dart, these Slashers as soon as they can, which may not be ever, because Slashers are extremely difficult to assault directly. The darts are doing a nice screening job, though, but even then, it's just not enough. There aren't enough units in here. It isn't going to work, and you're going to Anarchid take the center very handily, and at this point, this is an overwhelming advantage. Parzival has nothing. Ottawa has about as much as Yurga and Anarchid, like, kind of in between Yurga and Anarchid, but it doesn't matter. Anarchid's taken out Ottawa's northeast side of the map. Ottawa has basically their commander and a couple levelers. That's pretty much all that they have on the map at all, anywhere. Which is not that useful right now because, as you can see, Yurga switched over to Zeus Warrior. The levelers are going to do nothing. The ravagers, that was, those will be useful, but levelers, no. Not at all. Levelers were useful up until those glaives got destroyed by the commander explosion, at which point, there are no glaives! Thus, there's no need for, well, there's some need for levelers. They're still a good units. it's just, ravagers would be better. Dami would be actually really good. Wolverine would be okay. Sharpshooter from Parzival would be the best bet, though. That'd be the best thing to do. Parzival not even building anything. I'm really not sure why, but yeah, Parzival not... Okay, now going for a Scythe, which I don't agree with. I really think a Sharpshooter is the best way to go. I mean, there aren't really any good ways to go at this point, but... Of the bad ways, Sharpshooter is probably one of the better ones, as it does mean that Zeus or the Warrior, those would be killed pretty quick. Take a couple shots for Sharpshooter to kill Zeus, but at least they'd be dedicated anti-heavy. Yeah, at this point, Anakin and Yurga just, they're just surrounding, they're taking all the expansions, they're taking all the metal, and they will be just coming in with an overwhelming advantage pretty quickly now. A little surprising, no air switch. I was actually, I was trying to look for that, but nope, that has not happened. 
How the hell do you combat slashers? You attack them with a bunch of light units. The dart scorcher thing wasn't a bad idea. Yeah, glaives, that's another one, yeah. Get a lot of light units. That will get rid of slashers, no problem. Because slashers, they deal... They deal pretty damage to one or two units here and there, but yeah, they don't deal enough damage to get rid of a lot of light units, and they will be torn apart. But yeah, at this point, it doesn't matter. At this point, Anakin and your guys are going to be pushing in. Like they're they are going to be pushing in very strong between the Wolverines and the Slashers. These Lotuses are dead. Zeus doing a nice job scouting for it, and that's basically game. That's game one right there. There's really not much more to be said about this. Auto one Percival, like this was pretty much bound to happen. I don't think there's any other games going on at the moment. So if there is, I don't see them. Yeah, there are no other tournament games going on at the moment. So on the bright side, we might be able to see some of the more evenly matched games once the players involved do show up. Because not all the players have shown up so far. But yeah, that's... At this point, it has been pretty one-sided, and that's not surprising. And okay, at this point, just moving in with their commander. They're like, pushing their commander, morphing up because they can at this point. Seriously, guys, just, just end it. There's, there's not much we can be done. Like... Auto War and Parzival have basically nothing they can do. Auto War realizes this. Parzival, not sure if they quite understand. Yeah, Parzival doesn't realize this. I think Parzival... Parzival, do not change the speed of a game. I see, what? That must have been a mistake. They must have accidentally hit the plus... Numpad plus or something. Because that... Just... No. That is not a thing you do. Also, I gotta be honest, Parzival attitude in a tournament is not necessarily wrong. I have, I have in the past, more so with Akron than with 0k, pointed out that it is important to surrender if you know you're gonna lose, like just to avoid wasting your opponent's time. But in the case of a tournament, okay, this is not that case. There's just no way that Par Parzival and Anarchy, sorry, Parzival and Auto War can win. Jurgen and Anarchy would have to basically accidentally select everything and tell it to self-destruct in order for them to win. That's the only way that Auto War and Parzival can win at this stage. I mean, they don't necessarily know that, but it's fairly clear. However, in a tournament, being tenacious is a good idea because it is a tournament. It, there's a lot more on the line. It's actually really... Yeah, speech and charge case could be a lot more... a lot harder to get to. And I apologize. IRC will not show up in stream. There's been some changes to the IRC interface that Hitbox... well, that Hitbox unofficially uses and... Basically, it doesn't exist right now. It might exist later. It doesn't exist right now. It, I don't... I just don't know. Honestly, I don't get why it's such a problem, but yeah. It is. Anyway, so... Iken's just pointing out that Speech and Chalkies should be Control Plus Minus. They really should be Control Plus Minus, not just straight Plus Minus. Yeah, Parzival... It's not a matter of being a coward. Like Knowing when you've lost is still a good thing to know, just to avoid wasting time and avoid wasting energy. Like In a tournament, it's kind of a weird thing. You gotta... On the one hand, being tenacious is a good idea because it does mean... If you're being tenacious and you have some strategy, have something you can pull out that'll win the match, it might just work. And it might just win you the round, it might just win you the match, it might just actually win you the whole tournament. Like, try everything. But... At the same time, if you're wasting your energy trying to get wins, especially in a double limb, not so much single limb, but especially in a double limb where you're still going to be playing after you lose, don't burn your energy. Like, don't waste all your time and energy trying to get the last ditch effort if it's not, or just staying in game if it's not going to work. Just move on to the next game, because that way it's going to be easier to win the next game. But anyway, this is it. Parzival's being annoying. Like, Parzival's going way too far there, though. That That's just... That is bad sportsmanship. Anyway. That's game one. So we're going to have a game two pretty soon. I'm not sure what map it's going to be on. That is up to Ottawa and Parzival. Yeah, that was kind of a textbook. How to win an intersection. Take the corners. Attack directly once you have an overwhelming force. There, there wasn't much to say there. I mean, Parzival and Ottawa were... The only thing I think they could have done, maybe would have been to be a bit... Well, they took that northeast pretty well. The southwest, they didn't take it all. They didn't pay much attention to the center, and really just Parzival lost a lot of units over and over and over again. 
And that's never a good thing to do. Anyway, we're going to have Parzal and Ottawa choose their map. And in the meantime, I think I'm just going to go to intermission because there's really not much to say. I, I there's, What's there to analyze? Anarchid and Yurga are better players. They, they just are. Like the number, the LO is on their side, and Parzival and Ottawa are really kind of... Like, there's not much they can do. It's kind of tough. It, it's, it's one of those tough things about seeding, but yeah, Anakin and Yurga are the top seed. And Ottawa and Parzival are the kind of the lowest seed, and that's how it plays out. And it looks like Parzival wants to do small supreme islands. Or small supreme battlefield, I mean. Okay, that is... That is an unusual choice, but I could see it working as I plan on going for a hover amphib strategy. It's different. I don't know if that's going to do what it's going to... I don't think it's going to be necessarily what it'll work, though. And also, it's being pointed out that it's fairly large. It's 16 by 16, which isn't... That's not obnoxiously large. But it is an Ismith. Okay, what makes okay Iken's wondering about what makes Anarchid and Yurga so good. What makes them good at this point is just solid play. I mean, they're they kept their units alive. They attacked at the right points. They they just made sure everything that they were doing was worth doing. They didn't waste anything, and then eventually they knew when they could win, and they attacked when they could win. Just solid game sense and knowledge. And, yeah, po people are pointing out that are, they sh that Parzival and Ottawa should try something unorthodox, much like what Ophelius did in the 1v1 tournament against Lowry, where they won with... It wasn't actually so much unorthodox, it was actually playing the meta. Like, what Ophelius did in the last tournament was to take advantage of the fact that on Red Comet, your opponent is going to start out in the northeast or southwest. Almost always. And they're expecting you to start out in the opposite corner. No one's going to expect you to start out on the same side. That is something that Orphelius did in order to get a smaller rush distance. Like, there was a lot of thinking there. That was something that... Yeah, it was unorthodox, but it actually made a lot of sense considering the meta of that map. Now, Small Supreme Battlefield, on the other hand, that is never played. No, no one plays... I'm going to... Pull it up, too. Nobody plays this map. Like, this is not played in 0k. Small Supreme Islands was played in the Nauta tournament a few months back, but yeah, this is... This is it. Anyway, Parzival and Ottawa, the only alternative that comes to mind would be to go for... I mean, I suppose you could do Heavy Scythe? Try to really get the factory early on or something like that? Like... There's, on a map this big, there isn't a whole lot that can be done. I think with large maps like this, especially when you're dealing with corner star positions, especially, especially when you're dealing with the fact that there's only this strip of land, everything else is sea, so it basically has to be hover or amphib to get across. The only thing that can really be done, the only things that could be done are such, they're such long shots given the size of the map. Like, this is, when you're playing a big map, that's when you're the, like, the better player wants to play the big map, because they're going to be better in the late game. Like, when it gets to the point where you're dealing with massive economies, that's when you want to have a large map. Like, if you're a good player, if you're the better player, you want a massive economy, because you can handle it. A worse player is going to have a harder time knowing what to do, so it's going to be easier for the better player to win. On a large map like this, this favors Anakin and Yurga. Parzival and Auto War. They counterpicked into their own loss, basically. I mean, Parzival's going for Amphib. Ottawa's, for some reason, going for Cloaky by Factory. I don't understand why. Air would actually make a lot of sense there. They could go for Air, they could go for Ravens, go for very direct attacks. Air is what Yurg is going for, and Anarchid's going for Hovercraft, which actually... I want to see this. This is going to be... Ah, I kind of wish this is a more even match. If this was a more even match... Because Maces have been nerfed recently since the last... I think it was a little bit before the last tournament, actually. And I'd kind of like to see how that's been playing out. But I don't think that's going to matter here. I don't think... I don't see that being a thing. And... 
well, Yerga's already seen what's going on. They don't know Ottawa's going for Cloakie. I mean, one thing that Ottawa could do, and should do, is go for a Gremlin. I mean, not just for anti-air, but for scouting. Just get a Gremlin, walk it through, figure out what's going on, see what their opponents are doing. I mean, they could do cheesy tactics, especially if they have something they can do cheesy tactics with. The downside is that they have to kind of be on the beach. They can't be anywhere near the forest. If they get on the forest, that forest knocks knocked over. The gremlin is revealed by the fact that it knocked over the forest. Not a good plan. But yeah, the gremlin for scouting, that would at least give Ottawa and Parzival the knowledge advantage. They could, they could do something with that. But I don't see it happening. And also, these ducks going head on? No. They're going around, this is where the gremlin is perfect. If they go around and just hit, like all that Ottawa and Parzival can really do, especially in a map this large, is to put gremlins around, get scouting, get in, get perfect information on their opponents, and then find the weakest point and keep hitting the weakest points as they go. So that Anakin and Yuri keep having to defend everywhere until Ottawa and Parzival can get an economic advantage and try to win that way. I mean, like I said, it's tricky for a lower skill player to win by economic advantage, but on a map this large, that's your choice. So the only way you can really do it I can, that I can think of is to basically just cheese it out, just take out everything, harass as much as they can, force Anakin and Yurka to have to defend a lot more than they would like to. But that's not happening. In fact, the opposite is happening. Parzival and Auto War are building a lot of defenses of their own. They're building razors, they're building cobras. I, I saw, oh yeah, a bunch of anglers as well. This is what, this is what Parzival and Auto War want Anakin and Yurga to do. That's what they are doing. They are trying to fight head on, and that's, like I said before, that's not going to work. That really isn't going to work. And unlike Intersection, Yurga and Anakid could attack pretty much right now. In fact, Parzival's commander is almost dead, and Parzival is one of the front lines. Ottawa really should have been the one of the front lines, not Parzival. Like, Parzival should have been in the back going for air or something else. Ottawa should have been in the front lines. Because Ottawa very likely has a much better grasp of unit micromanagement and just unit choices in general. They're just good choices in general. Although the duck is finally getting... No, it's not going to get rid of the mace. And the mace and daggers... This mace is going to be retreated, as it should be. But yeah, Parzival just doesn't really have the units to do this. Like, And they're in the front lines. I mean, Ottawa, they are building up quite a lot. They're getting a decent economy. But this is a 2v2. This is a team game, and Anakin and Yurga are both getting a solid economy. So at this point, Anakin and Yurga are still very much ahead, and Ottawa and Parcival are still playing the straightforward game. Which is where Anakin and Yurga... They're just playing Anakin and Yurga's game. This entire time, that's what they're playing. They are not playing their own game. They are playing into Anakin and Yurga's hands. And Razors... Yeah, Razors are being built everywhere. I wish you'd argue, probably wish you could argue against the, the map choice. Because, like I said, this is not a good map if you're trying to cheese out your opponent. <clears throat> <coughs> not really sure what is in 2v2. I mean, Icy Run, I suppose, but that's. Yeah, maybe. Because there is a lot of cheese you can do in 2v2. You can do, like, Gunship Rush Cheese. You can do. I suppose Bomber Rush Cheese. You can't really do Strider Rush Cheese. But yeah, Brawler Rush with both commanders just pushing into a single Brawler? That was a classic thing. I'm not sure. I don't think it still works, but it might. I don't know. Catch him by surprise. It might just work. Too late now. I mean, it's way too late now. Like, Ottawa and Parzival have very little chance at this point to do anything, but that could have been something on a much smaller map. Like, I mean, Icy Run is, I think, a valid map. It's a weird one that no one picks, thankfully, but it's one that it could have worked on. That sort of strategy could have worked. Well, sort of. I mean, it would have been scattered out fairly easily, but yeah, at this point... At this point, Anarchid is coming in with the daggers, coming in, tearing apart all the metal extractors. This is exactly what Auto War and Parzival would have wanted to do to Anarchid and Yurga. Attack the weak points, figure, find out all the metal extractors that have no defenses on them, and just take them out. Peg all of them. But that's not going to happen. And Parzival has surrendered, despite their previous comments, in the, or rather their comments in the previous game about being... I ended up being cowardly to resign. And Auto War is... Okay, there we go. Resigned. That is that match. Yeah. Well, that was no surprise.
That really wasn't a surprise at all. And Kid and Yurga went for the straightforward play that they could handle. They had the economic advantage. They... And Anakin did a pretty good job keeping that mace alive, too. Where is that mace? I think the mace died. Ultimately, I think it died. But, yeah, it stayed alive for a long time. It did a lot of damage. In fact, it might still be alive because it was getting retreated. Okay, I don't see it anywhere on the map. But, still, it lasted for a while. I mean, that... That was well done. But, for the most part, it was just... I think those ducks... They want to get, like, the mace is a type counter, outright. Anarchy had just called that properly. Like, that was just a good read on what Parsifal would do, and what, what would be done in the front lines. It'd be early raiding. Well, build an early riot. I mean, that was a blind read, too, and Anarchy had called it. And Yurga going for air? Well, that's a typical thing in 2v2. It's kind of surprising that no one else has done that, or people don't tend to do that very much. But yeah, that is a common thing. That's just a good thing to do. It's strong, especially in a map... On a map where you're dealing primarily with water-based units, it's water and air. Ground, pure ground is only going to be able to go through the center, which is why I don't know why Ottawa went for Cloakybot Factory. That makes no sense on this map. So anyway, we're going to be having... Okay, what is going on right now? So it looks like... At this point... Judging by the original brackets, this is going to change. In fact, I'm going to refresh it in case it has. So, yeah, Anakin and Yurga have one. So at this point, Iron Brigade's not here. Andrew Wadi is not here, I think. Nope, not here. Killer's here. Ralahop's not. Maj is not here. Sinnoh is not here. Skazi is here, and Ophelius is here. <clears throat> Sandro and Shadwo are not here. Norm and Rymark. Norm is not here. Rymark is. Yeah, not a lot of people are actually here. I think we're going to be having quite a few people swapping in at this stage. <clears throat> so I honestly don't know what match we're going to have next because there's, like, there are a lot of sub opportunities. If you're watching the stream right now, and well, actually, if you're watching the stream right now, you probably are also watching the games or are in the chat lobby. If you aren't, well, now's a good time to get into Zurich tournaments because there's a lot of sub spots open. Yeah, this is this is going remarkably poorly. <sighs> oh well. Anyway, I'm gonna come back when we have some knowledge of what's going on. Once we actually get players in. In the meantime, please enjoy this intermission music, and I'll be back when there's something to happen. I don't know. I mean, at this point, Anarchid and Yurga are basically going to be fighting Skazi and Orphelius. And maybe, I guess, Killer and Rymark. And then just fight for top three. I don't know. That that seems to be what's probably going to happen at this stage unless we get subs. So stay tuned for the possibility of subs. <laughs> 